It's important then to understand that if the liver is doing these things, it needs to have a good supply. It needs to be connected to the uh, circulatory system in an appropriate way that would allow it to do these things. So, while many organs, while many organs, like for example the kidney, for example, the kidney has got an incoming blood supply, which is the renal artery coming in, and what comes out is the renal vein. Simple as that. And most, or, most um, uh, organs in the body have that. You've got an incoming artery. To supply the cells, the artery splits up into arterioles and capillaries which rejoin to form venules and vein, and then the vein exits uh, with the deoxygenated blood. And that's the case for most, organ, uh, for most organs in the body. But the liver is slightly different. The liver has two blood supplies and one blood output. Okay, so let's look at these. First one, obviously, well, let's, let's talk about for the first one, which is the hepatic portal vein. So the hepatic portal vein is coming from the digestive organs, okay? Um, and that's why it is deoxygenated, okay? It is deoxygenated because the digestive organs have already absorbed, or the cells of the digestive, digestive organs have absorbed that oxygen, that or the oxygen that was in the oxygenated blood that came from the heart. And now on the way back to the heart, in the vein, it's actually taking a stop at the liver, okay? Because the liver has to deal with the nutrients or, or, the, or the products of digestion before the blood goes to the rest of the body, okay? You can't have that uh, you can't have the blood that has got the incorrect composition of nutrients going to the, to the whole body. Send it to the liver, the liver can deal with it. Once it's kind of normalized things, then it can leave. Go to the heart and then the heart can pump it back out to the body. So the hepatic portal vein brings blood from the digestive system, however it is deoxygenated. Okay. If we think about this blood, it's going to have some important things in it. It's going to be rich in amino acids, as we would expect. It is going to be rich in um, sugars, such as glucose. It's going to be rich in lip, uh, fatty acids, glycerol, etc. Okay, it might even have some pathogens in it that have snuck in through the digestive system. Pathogens. How much space have I got here? Okay, I've got some space. All right, so we've got some fatty acids, we've got some pathogens in there. Okay, what else could we have? Amino acids. Um, I think that's about it, right? Um, yeah. Okay, those are the main things that we're, we're really concerned with. Okay. All right, so that is the blood that's coming into the liver. However, look at all these things that the cells of the liver are doing. Each of these arrows that are, are shown here probably represents quite complicated metabolic pathways which are being carried out by enzymes. So all that metabolism is happening. Some of those reactions are gonna need the input of energy. And in order to do that, there's going to be a whole lot of respiration that's going on in the cells too. So we've got lots of me metabolic reactions. We've got lots of respiration that provides the energy for the, for the metabolic processes, for the metabolic reactions. And in order to do that, there's going to need to be a good supply of oxygen, but that's not going to come from the hepatic portal vein. So we do need that other blood supply, which is the hepatic artery. So this is branched off from uh, the aorta, okay? So this is bringing oxygenated blood that hasn't stopped anywhere else. This is the first stop uh, for that blood, okay? So it's bringing oxygenated blood 
and it's bringing, it's bringing the oxygenated blood to the cells of the liver. So while they're dealing with all these nutrients and doing all this stuff, they've got that supply of oxygen as well so that they can do that. All right. But then as this blood moves through the liver, all this stuff is happening, oxygen's being used up. Once the, once that, once the liver cells have processed that blood, then it's going to leave and it, can, it, it only has to leave in one blood vessel because all of the blood is going into one place, which is the heart. And then once it gets to the heart via the vena cava, the heart can then pump it back out through the aorta to the rest of the body with all, all this stuff already done to the blood. Okay, so it gets the processed, more uh, useful, less toxic blood. Okay, and so the blood vessel that the blood leaves the liver is called the hepatic vein. Okay, so that's the overall organization of the liver. Um, this is what the liver does, and now we'll have a look at the kind of uh, more microscopic structure of the liver to see how that enables it to perform all these functions. Because remember, all this stuff is happening in each of the liver's cells, okay? And each of the liver's cells has got blood from two sources, and the blood that leaves uh, past each of the liver cells is eventually going to go into the hepatic vein. So let's see now how that happens. The liver actually utilizes an important concept, which is you, that, that, the, that there's a small part of the liver, there's a small structure in the liver that does essentially what the whole liver does. And in order for that to be done efficiently, it needs to have a high surface area. And in order for there to be a high surface area, it's just repeated many, many times. For example, just like the, um, each alveolus of the lung um, exchanges gas with the blood. So each alveolus is actually doing the job of the whole lung. It's just one wouldn't be enough. So you have hundreds and hundreds of them. And so the same thing is repeated with the liver. So you have these little structures called lobules, which in fact do the whole job of the liver. It's just one wouldn't be enough. And so the lobule is repeated many, many times um, in order to, to process it, all the blood that, that an organism like us would need. I guess it's similar with the kidney as well. You've got one nephron that is carrying out ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption, reabsorption of water, all that stuff, but one wouldn't be enough. You need to have many, many, many of them in order to, to, to process enough of the blood. In the same way, we've got these structures in the liver called lobules. So the way I like to think of it is that you've got these lobules. Obviously, I'm exaggerating how few of them there are and how large they are. But the liver, you can think of the liver as being made up of many, many, many lobules. Okay. Get on with it, Babsy. Okay, so the liver is made up of these lobule structures. And here's the, the important thing, is that each of the blood inputs each of the blood inputs branches out or converges, however you want to look at it, branches out to supply each lobule. And from each lobule, each uh, blood output converges to form the one main blood output, which, which is the hepatic vein. Okay, so what would happen is that you have the incoming hepatic portal vein. Now the hepatic portal vein would then branch to supply that lobule. It would then branch to supply that lobule, that lobule, that lobule, that lobule, that lobule, and so on. Similarly, same kind of 
delio is happening with the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery is also splitting up to supply that lobule. Supply that lobule. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. And so on. Okay? And similarly, from each lobule, the blood then converges in the center. Okay? So the blood then mixes. So we have a lobule here. Then what's going to happen is that at the center we have the central vein of each lobule, but then from the center, so the hepatic portal vein and the hepatic artery mix. And then what they do is they converge on the central vein and the central vein from each lobule converges to form the hepatic vein. Okay, so you've got these two that converge. So for each lobule, so for each lobule is going to have a central vein. And each from each lobule, then you get this convergence. You get this convergence on of them of, of all of these central veins to form the hepatic vein. So this is how it really works. So that's why when you see the structures of that lobule and you see the, the individual um, supplies to each lobule and then the, exit, the blood exit from each lobule, essentially that's explaining, you just got to think of that multiplied up many, many times and that explains then how a, you know, these, these main vein and arteries into the liver Oh, sorry, the main arteries into the, actually the vein and the artery into the liver, and then the vein that leaves the liver, how that might work on a more minute scale. Okay, so that's, that's the blood. But then each lobule is also producing, each lobule is also producing bile. Well, each lobule is also producing bile, and that kind of goes in the opposite direction out of each of the lobules, okay? And each of the lobules then, sorry, each of the, each of the canals in which the bile is produced then exit and they themselves converge to form the bile duct. Okay, so from each lobule, we're going to have a, a little branch of the bile duct. You can think of it that way. And then those from each lobule, they all kind of converge together. So from all, from all the lobules, then the bile ducts converge to form the main bile duct. That leaves the liver um, towards the gallbladder. And that's, I don't know, I... At some point, I think I was well-intentioned. I did have the intention of helping you, but um, this looks very confusing. Um, but yeah, okay, so there we have it. Now, what we can do is then just look at one of these lobules, see what it does, and because we have this understanding of how each lobule fits into the overall structure of the liver, once we understand how one lobule works, we basically understand how the liver does everything that it does. So here we have a section of the uh, lobule. Okay, so this is just one section of that hexagonal structure. The same, uh, the, whatever, I've, whatever I'm going to draw here is going to be repeated five more times to, to create that lobule structure. Okay, so here we have the liver cells in black. This is the outer edge of that lobule, and then we're moving towards the inner side. What we have then 
is we have a, a number of things. Now, we have the liver cells here, um, which, is the, which, which are the hepatocytes. Then, remember, we have the blood vessel. So we've got a, a blood vessel here. So a branch of the hepatic portal vein. Okay, and that will go all the way like this. All the way. But then we also have on the other side, we have a branch of the hepatic artery. So all the cells um, have access to oxygenated blood as well. Okay, and I guess by the time, by the time the blood vessel gets to around here, it is going to be deoxygenated. But it gives a chance for all, for this blood to mix in this area, or at least the fluids to mix in this area, so that all the cells essentially do have a supply of oxygen from a nearby uh, blood vessel. Okay. So they kind of merge here and they will form the central vein. So the central vein is going to be here. So I'll draw the whole central vein so all of the lobules are going to empty into the central vein. Okay? So but we've sorry, not all of the lobules, all, all of the sections, all of the six sections of the lobules will uh, empty into the central vein. All right. Just got one thing missing, which is the bile duct. So the bile that's being produced by these hepatocytes that is going to collect and leave in the bile duct or a branch of the a bile duct. So essentially, this is. Uh, the functional unit, in a way, of the liver. Because this same structure, whatever job this section is doing that we are going to discuss, that's going to be repeated in the rest of the lobule. And then that is going to be repeated across all the different lobules, all the many lobules of the liver. And collectively, um, there we have uh, the liver.